Hello, my name is Jason Glatz. I am the map specialist here at the university. And this presentation is gonna be talking a little bit about the mapping service that we have here at the library and how it can help you with your research and your publications. So before I get into explaining what GIS is and how it can help with your research and publication needs, I wanna just briefly emphasize that the mapping service that we have here at WMU Libraries is free for all WMU community members. There is no uh, cost associated with my time. Uh, if you have a extremely rare or expensive data set that you need to procure for your project, there might be a cost associated with that, but my time is complimentary. GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. It is a relational database with a geographic component that allows you to represent and analyze geographic information. If you've ever used Photoshop or if you've seen it being used, uh, it's a similar concept. There are multiple layers to a map that you stack on top of each other, as you can see in the uh, picture associated with the slide. Once you have these uh, georeferenced and stacked on top of each other, you can then use it to make a map or you can do more complex analysis, uh, which I will show in a few seconds. You'll want to use GIS and maps whenever you have something with a spatial component to it. Uh, the table on the left doesn't mean much to anybody unless they are stone cold election junkies in Kalamazoo. But if you look at the map on the right, you can see that there is a clear uh, spatial pattern that's going on with the voting uh, returns. Uh, this does not this is not conveyed if you only have the table in your project. Most of the projects I work on with the mapping service can be grouped into two broad categories. Uh, one I like to call representation and the other analysis. So an example of representational map would be something where a client comes to me with data already in hand and they want me to simply map the data to show uh, what they want it to show. So for example, on the left here, we have a straightforward map that shows the distribution of WMU students, uh, residents outside of the state of Michigan in 2012. For analysis, um, I will actually be using the GIS software to derive data that will go into the research that the client is asking for. So for example, on the right here, I had a client who wanted me to create an elevation profile of a stretch of road. And so they gave me the road that they wanted and the, I found a digital elevation model. And I used the tool in GIS to uh, derive the elevation profile for that stretch of road, which you can see down on the bottom there. Um, and then they use that information to put that into their model. Another quick example of a representative map is a uh, one that I made for a history professor a number of years ago. He came to me with a series of maps uh, for railroads, administrative units, and forests. And he wanted elements of each of these maps to be extracted and combined into one clean map that he could put into his publication. To create this map, I took the three base maps that the professor had given me, I georeferenced them and extracted the relevant elements out of each map, combining them into one unified map that he could use for his publication. For an example of how GIS can assist in research, I want to talk about a project I worked on with a biology master's student. She was looking at uh, bats and uh, she was interested in some specific information about her study area. So the first step was to map her study area and the all of the water bodies around it. Apparently the flight path or the distance that one of the bats that she was studying could fly was about 12 kilometers. So we isolated all of the water bodies that were within a 12 kilometer buffer of her study site. Once we extracted all of the water bodies within a 12 kilometer buffer, we created a centroid for each of the polygons. And then we measured the distance from the study site to the centroid of each polygon. After that, I ran a tool that created a table that would give the distance from the study site to the centroid of each of these water bodies, which she could then use as an input into her model for her research. 
While I can't say I've made maps from A to Z, I can say that I have made them from archaeology to world languages and literature, which is pretty close. One other component of the mapping service that I want to touch on briefly involves online mapping. We do have the ability to create online maps, and you can use them if you want to create an interactive aspect to your research. One category of these online maps are called story maps. Uh, they are templates that are created that can present different information in different ways. So this map below is a method of showing geographic components of pictures, so where the pictures were taken on a map. Um, this happens to use our Ward Morgan collection from the university libraries as a uh, sample. Another story maps template allows you to tell stories by integrating multimedia maps and text in order to tell the story that you like. This one we created in, in collaboration with the university archives to tell this history of WMU's campus. If you'd like to contact me to talk about how we can further your research interests, uh, I can be reached by email, by phone, or you can make an appointment at the link below.